Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan. I wanted to take a few moments today to show you how to get started with the AWS PowerShell module. You can use the AWS PowerShell module to manage your cloud resources inside of your AWS accounts. Now, although I'm recording this video on a Windows 10 system, you should be able to fairly closely replicate these steps on a Mac or Linux system as well. I'm going to be using Docker for this example. As you can see, if I run Docker Info, I get some basic high-level information about the Docker instance that's running on my local system. For Linux users, you'll want to install Docker directly, or if you're on Mac, you can also install the Docker for Mac solution as well. Once you've installed Docker for Windows, Mac, or Linux, the first thing you'll want to do to get PowerShell is to pull the PowerShell container image. In order to pull the PowerShell container image, we're going to use the docker pull command and specify the image name of Microsoft slash PowerShell. Now, I've already pulled this image on my system, so it's going to tell me that the image is already up to date. Now that I've pulled the image locally onto my container host, I can now instantiate a new Docker container from that image. I'm going to call docker run with the dash dash rm flag, and that will automatically delete the container after I'm finished with it to avoid any clutter. Next, I'm going to add the interactive and TTY parameters, and that's going to allow me to interact with the PowerShell process that runs inside of the container. Finally, I'll specify the Microsoft slash PowerShell container image, as that's the image that I want to instantiate a new container from. So now, as you can see, I've launched a new PowerShell container running the Linux version or the PowerShell core edition, and we can inspect that using PS version table. And if we check out this PS edition property here, sure enough, it's set to core. Whereas if I were to run PS version table on my Windows system natively, you can see that I have PowerShell 5.1 instead, and the edition is desktop edition. So now that I've verified that I can successfully run a container, let's go ahead and run another new one here. And let's go ahead and start off by installing the AWS PowerShell module. To install modules for PowerShell from the PowerShell gallery at powershellgallery.com, you want to use the install module command, which is provided by the PowerShell get module that's built into PowerShell itself. So let's take a quick look at how that module works. So if you run get module, PowerShell get, and then call list available because it's not yet imported into our environment, you'll see that it exports a variety of different commands to help us search for modules inside of the PowerShell gallery, save modules locally, update modules, and install them from scratch. Now, even if you're updating an existing version of the AWS PowerShell module, I recommend that you use the install module command, as you can call it as many times as you want to, item potently. So go ahead and just run the install module command with AWS PowerShell.NET Core. Next, we're going to specify the scope parameter, and we're going to type current user, and that's going to install it to the current users PowerShell directory instead of the all users directory that makes the module available to all users. Now, although we're running inside of a Docker container that's running as root, the current user isn't really necessary in this case. But if you're running on a, a Windows system, for example, that has least privilege enabled or user account control, if you specify the scope of current user, that avoids you needing administrative permissions to the system in order to install by the, to the all users directory by default. Now, keep in mind that there are two different versions of the AWS PowerShell module. There's simply AWS PowerShell, which works on the Windows version of PowerShell or the desktop edition that we saw up here. And there's the AWS PowerShell.NET Core version that runs cross-platform natively on Mac, Linux, and Windows. The .NET Core version of the AWS PowerShell module, as the name implies, is based on the .NET Core framework that's open sourced from Microsoft and runs natively cross-platform. Okay, so now we've installed the AWS PowerShell module, and let's just validate that by calling get module dash list available, and then name of AWS star. Sure enough, we do have the latest version of the AWS PowerShell module installed inside of our Docker container. So now we need to run on to the next step, which is to set up our AWS credentials file. Setting up the AWS credentials file is how you authenticate to your AWS account so that you can manage different resources using the PowerShell module itself. 
So in order to configure this AWS credentials file, I'm going to use Vim. So because we're inside of a Ubuntu-based Docker container image, we need to do an apt update command to update our uh, repository details. And then we need to do an apt install Vim. And that's going to install the Vim package. So this is going to take a minute or two to install. Uh, or maybe less. And in the meantime, we're going to switch over to the AWS Management Console and create a new automation account, or rather a user account in IAM. So to do that, we're going to navigate over to the IAM service in the AWS Console. Then you're going to click on Users, and you're going to go ahead and create a new user. You'll go ahead and give this user a username. So let's call this Automation PS. And then there's two different options here for the access type. So when we create a new user inside of AWS IAM, you can either enable it for programmatic access so that you can call AWS APIs, or you can enable it for AWS Management Console access so that you can actually log into the Management Console from your web browser like I've done here. In this particular case, I don't need a new user account to log into the console because I already have one that I'm logged in with. Instead, we're going to enable this account for programmatic access, which will enable us to create an access key ID and secret access key to call the various AWS APIs. So go ahead and make sure programmatic access is checked and that AWS Management Console access is unchecked, and click Next. On this screen, you're going to specify the permissions that you want, or IAM policies as they're known, for this user account to have. We're not going to actually attach any policies right now because we basically just want to validate that we have a valid user and that we can actually uh, call an AWS API even though we'll get an access denied message. So normally I would come in here and probably choose the administrator access policy as that gives you access to all of the different services inside of AWS. So let's go ahead and just finish by creating the user. And as you can see, because we checked that box enabling programmatic access, we now have the user along with an access key ID and a secret access key. The access key ID you can think of like your username in a way, and the secret access key is kind of like a password. But these are automatically generated for you by AWS, and you can't change them unless you refresh and regenerate a new access key ID. You can't actually specify the values yourself. So what we're going to do is switch back over to our PowerShell console here. And I'm going to go ahead and fire up Vim. And we're going to actually first create a directory called home slash dot AWS, because this is the default file system location where the AWS SDKs for various languages search for a credentials file. So once I've created that dot AWS directory in my uh, home folder, I'm going to create a file called credentials inside of that directory. So you can specify one or more profiles here. By default, the AWS SDKs look for a profile called default. And the file itself, the credentials file, has an any-like format. So what we're going to do is specify our AWS access key ID. And then we'll go ahead and copy and paste this access key ID. And on the next line, we're going to put AWS secret access key. And then, of course, we'll copy and paste our secret access key into that field. So we'll go ahead and save that file using the write quit command in Vim. And now we're ready to actually test out the functionality of AWS PowerShell. So the first thing that we need to do in order to call most APIs, you'll typically need to set your default region. So let's go ahead and set our default region to... Uh, let's say US West 2. And this is just taking a second because the module has to get imported into the environment. Even though we installed it, we didn't actually import it into PowerShell, so it's automatically importing it as we're trying to type this command here. So let's go ahead and specify the US West 2 region. So now we don't have to specify the region parameter on every command call that we make. So let's go ahead and try a simple command like get IAM user. And as you can see, we have an error message here basically saying that the user account we've created doesn't have permission to query IAM. And that's because we didn't attach any access policies to the account when we created it. So let's go ahead and switch back over to the AWS Management Console in our browser. And now I'm going to actually attach a policy to this user. So if we come into the Permissions tab for this Automation PS user, let's go ahead and just add a permission. We'll say Attach an Existing Policy. And let's go ahead and just give it a 
single permission to something like, let's say, SQS. So we'll give it SQS full access. Associate that policy with the user account. And as you can see, it's now been attached. That policy is attached to our user account. So now if we come back over here to our AWS PowerShell module and do, let's say, get SQS queue, you can see that we now are able to query the SQS service for a list of queues. We could also do something like new SQS queue and specify a queue name of automation PS. And sure enough, we were successfully able to call the SQS APIs. But if we try to call the get IAM user command again, you can see that we still get that access denied error message because we only bound a policy to our user account that gives it access to the SQS service and not the IAM service. So that's just the very briefly how you get started with the AWS PowerShell module. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or look forward to the next video. Thanks for watching.